previously on the Frontier Farmer. So we've got everything nicely stacked away. The chickens need a bit more feed. Now this would be the third bale, morning top up of TMR. Now pigs are looking pretty good, but they could probably do with a bit more base food. And the sheep are nice and easy. We can just lob them in some hay. But for now, let's spread some manure on our grass field. So it's on to winter project mode and we are going to go buy a piece of equipment that's going to help us build a road. But here we go, we can drive through, create our road. But yep, as you can see here, we're going to come across a tree. Carry on and create the rest of our road. We have carved our road through the dark forest, but we'll try and pick up as much stones as possible. It's nicely flattened. But snow is on the horizon, so that might be the better time to do our restoration project on the Fortrit Harvester. And then one other thing I'd like to explore is potentially setting up a bakery. Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Frontier Farmer at the Dark Forest. We're now in January. I'm just out in the front garden with Barkamus. He's having a little wander around. And unlike a typical January, we still have some sunshine, which is a bit rare. And I've been checking the weather station, and it looks like we are going to have some snow later on this evening. But it's not the most accurate of things, so we will have to wait and see. We'll have a stroll through here. We're not growing anything in the open garden at the moment just because of the time of year and we seem to have everything we need, which is good. Already done a cursory check of all the animals this morning and they are looking good and healthy. But today we are going to be working around our field two area to turn this into a production and shed space. I have one production in mind, which is a bakery that's going to allow us to bake bread. And we've got a grader here and a roller which we use to make the road on the other side of field number four that runs through to the animal dealership. We're not going to be using that today, but at some point in the future we will be. So my first port call is getting this area transformed into something a little bit more useful. So I'm going to get busy and I'll see you when I'm finished. And there we go. I've placed our bakery, which is actually called Oven for Bread and Cookies. 
we'll inspect that a little bit later but it's a rather charismatic building built out of stone but lots of wood in there as well in fact let's uh, take a little look on in there because it's very interesting we have a wood storage area and storage for some of the other ingredients that we're going to need to make bread which we'll get into and then we've got two brick ovens at the back which we can use to bake our bread and cookies and then a door that goes out the back I can fit through and yeah just a little bit of a storage and disposal area at the back with a, a drain and over here I have placed a couple more sheds now I'm thinking that this is going to be a good workshop for us to work on the fortress harvester to get it up to speed so yeah that's pretty good got some windows at the back as well so we can look out onto our field our grass field and then we have two of our modular sheds in series next to each other and thanks to the configurable walls we've got walls on the end but we've kept the middle nice and open so we can walk through the entirety of the shed and we've got our props uh, around the side and around the back which is pretty good gives it some good character so finally we've turned field two or what was field two into a usable space and we are going to set about getting some bread baked today because it is winter we want some good bread to keep us nice and fed so first and foremost we need to inspect the recipe that we're going to need so this is the oven for cookies and bread and we can make bread dough baked bread cookie dough and cookies now the cookie recipe is quite complex we haven't got some of the items we have flour and we have eggs but we oh yes we have milk as well but we need chocolate butter and sugar so i'm going to look to see if i can produce some of that myself uh, if not we will be able to purchase those ingredients but we do have apart from salt and yeast all the things that we need to make bread dough so we've got flour and we've got water so we'll need to fetch some salt and some yeast and then once we've made the bread dough we can go on to bake some bread for which we need wood got plenty of that because we're in a forest and then the bread dough so first of all we need the stuff for bread dough and i'm going to start with flour because we have some of that at our windmill so we'll hop in the wheel loader and grab the big bag lifter that's going to help us with all the pallets and we'll go fetch a trailer oven takes 5,000 litres of flour so that's five pallets that we need to go and fetch now we need the bale trailer that's got a flatbed so we can get some pallets on there the bigger flatbed is a little bit too big for this job so we can cope with this smaller one we're gonna head up windmill hill to our windmill which has been stationary for a little while we've made our flour from oats and we've also made some canola oil from our canola and yeah we might need to check the canola oil price to see if it's a good time to sell we can leave the trailer there and we'll go into the windmill so we can get some pallets deposited so we've got five pallets out here they are one is not a complete pallet though so that's a shame but we'll get these loaded I think uh, oh we've got three there we might need to do three and then a further two so I'm going to get this loaded and I'll see you when we're back at the bakery
Right, we have made it and we loaded up some of the flour a bit awkwardly because it is tight round by the windmill. But we will drop this pallet off and unleash the straps on the other section. And I think it's a bit of a manual job to get the flour in there, so I'm going to have to do packet by packet, which will take me a while. So I'm going to see to that and we'll get all the flour in. Seems this first pallet is light enough for me to lift. We can get it unloaded there. There we go. We have 313 litres of flour in, so let's get the rest. Last bags unloaded. And we have 4,313 litres of flour in there. So that's a good start. And next we are going to need some water. And it's a smaller quantity, so I'm thinking I'm going to purchase a bucket to help us transport that. We need salt and we need yeast, so we need to go to the distribution center to get a hold of a supply of that. Now I am having second thoughts, so I wonder if we could buy the ingredients for cookies, because we have flour, milk and eggs already. So we just need to buy chocolate, butter and sugar. And that seems pretty reasonable to me, so yeah, I think we're actually going to try and make bread and cookies today. We will see how we get on. But for the trip down to the distribution center, I'm going to get the wheel loader and trailer parked up and we will go down in the pickup. Here it is, the Apache. Let's head on down to the distribution center and we have a long list of shopping to get. This pickup does make it nice and handy for quick trips over to the center. Lovely. Right, let's pick up what we need. So we're going to need a trusty bucket to fetch water, can take 200 litres, $50. We are going to get two lots of yeast, $250, quite expensive. Two lots of salt, some empty jars for our cookies. Two boxes of chocolate. Two lots of sugar. Two lots of butter red box and a cookie box Righty, so we've got a large array of ingredients let's get this all loaded onto the pickup cookie jars and the last thing is our bucket now i think this can hopefully carry our water and also the milk we'll have to see how we get on filling it up with milk might be that we have to get a milk trailer to extract it from the cow farm. All right, that's all loaded up. So let's lash it all down, close it up and get back to the homestead. Pretty fully laden pickup, fresh from the distribution center. Luckily, they've got all the ingredients we need stocked up for us to make such things like bread and cookies. And we've made it back so we can park up around the front and start to get all of this loaded in. Start with the easy stuff, sugar. Sugar in. Yeast. We've filled up with yeast so we can leave the excess on the shelf over here. Salt. Salt's gone in, nice. Chocolate, yummy. Might have to sneak a bar or two for myself. Chocolate all in. Butter. And that's all the butter in. Cookie jars will just stash there. And same for the cookie and the bread box, fantastic. Right, so we need to fill this with water and I think we're going to need the tanker. So we will go and get the farm all with the water tanker. Always a nice opportunity to use the farm all when we can. I think if we pull up near the bucket we should get the overloading option come up. There we go, our bucket is now full of water. Probably got a few trips to do with this, but let's get the first bit unloaded. Water's going in. Now this is the fourth load, and that will give us 800 litres in there. 
Now the real question will be, can the bucket take milk? So let's go to the cow farm and see if we can collect some. Doesn't seem like we can collect milk, so we're going to have to get a milk tank of sorts. So we'll have to go back to the distribution centre, but we'll leave the bucket there for now and fetch the eggs. And as luck would have it, we have a fresh pallet which has only a few eggs on, so we can carry that. Let's go drop this in the bakery. Have to go through the wider entrance for this one, but there we go. We should be able to deposit our eggs. Ta-da! So it seems like the empty jar should go on here. There we go. So the last thing we need is milk. So I'm going to go and fetch a trailer from the distribution centre, but we'll park the farm all back up because we don't need any more water. Back in the pickup and let's go get ourselves a milk trailer. In fact, the trailer that I've been wanting to get for a little while is one that is for our truck. And it might be a bit big, but I think it's going to be a bit more versatile because it can carry more things than just milk. So let's drop the trailer and head off to pick up our truck tanker for carrying milk and other liquids. Really are getting very lucky with the weather this winter. I'm expecting we're probably going to have a harsh February. We'll see what it's like. So this is the trailer. It's the Lizard K-Base water trailer, but it can also take milk, liquid fertilizer, fuel, and I think it can take slurry. But we are just going to use it probably for milk and water. And if we want to transport fuel, we'll probably see about getting another one because we don't want to be mixing those two things. But this can take 15,000 litres and it's going to cost us $12,850. So a bit expensive, but worth it in the long run. Here is our new tanker trailer, and I'm sure you'll agree that it's a good choice buying it because it looks like it's going to be a really nice match for our truck. Yeah, looks to go pretty well with our IFA. Super. Right, let's head back and we can go pick up some milk and hopefully get it emptied into the bucket. We can enter into the animal farm and get in position to load up some milk so we are in position hopefully we can load milk hey there we go and i think i can overflow to the bucket superb right let's get this over to the bakery because we're going to have a few bucket loads of milk to put in there now i really should have put that gate here because we're going to be doing some trips between the animals and the bakery, no doubt, for things like eggs. Right, first bucket of milk, let's put this in. And four loads in there. Fantastic. So I think we have all the ingredients we need. And put the bucket down. So for bread dough, we have flour, water, salt, and yeast. So we can kick that off. That's going to do 24 cycles a month or a day in our case and make a hundred bread doughs or a hundred units, hundred liters. And for cookie dough, we have flour, chocolate, milk, sugar, butter and eggs. And that's going to make a hundred units of cookie dough as well. Again, another 24 cycles a month or a day in our case. So let's activate that. And there's no production cost because we've done all the manual labor ourselves by moving all the ingredients. So for the bread, we are going to need some wood. We'll fetch that later, but we really need the dough to be processing for an hour or two to make enough bread dough to bake some bread. And same for cookies. We're going to need to fetch some wood. And once we've processed enough cookie dough, we can get that loaded in here. And we've already got some empty jars, so that is good. So we will return later once we've had enough time to process some dough. We'll get the lorry parked up with the tanker trailer. And luckily we have some new sheds to be able to store some of this equipment. And we'll have to do a bit of a reorganization to move some of the stuff from our very hectic sheds on the other side of the yard. 
There we go, that can go there for now. Okay, so whilst we wait for our bread and cookie dough to be made and to nicely rise, we are going to jump in the fortress and take that over to our new garage shed and see about tweaking this uh, old harvester. And as I mentioned, when we finish the soybean harvest in field four, it is running a little bit slow and a little bit hot. You'll be able to see the blue smoke puffing out of the harvester. So definitely something not quite right with this. And uh, I'm hoping that we're going to be able to tweak it and speed up the performance a little bit when it's harvesting. So we'll get it in the shed and set to work. And we'll see if we can give it a bit of a tidy up. There we go, so the engine is at the back of this harvester. Well, it's actually in the middle, really. So we'll just reverse in here, and I've got my workshop trailer pulled in already. So let's shut down. And yeah, I'm going to get busy having a little scout underneath and all around the harvester. See if there's anything obvious that we can tweak. I'm probably going to have to get topside as well, so we can inspect the engine and get that all fixed up. So let's see what we can do. All right, I've been working on the portrait for a bit over an hour now and I've given it a good wash. And also we have had a little tinker with the engine and I've given it a good dose of oil and we've played with a few belts and pulleys. And I think we've got it a little bit more efficiently. The uh, fan needed a good clean off as well and hopefully that's going to make it run a little bit more efficiently now i have given it a wash but unfortunately it seems like all of this straw and crud that is on it just won't come off and i've spoken to the distribution center they can't source any fresh paint for us and they don't have any replacement parts for this particular model of harvester so the stuck on straw and crud is going to have to stay i don't necessarily mind that because it adds a good amount of character but yeah it does mean it's a rather older looking machine so what we can do is we can hold on to this and accept the way it looks and we'll also just test out to see that it does run a bit faster with the header or we could look to trade it in and there's a couple of alternative options that we could look at to trade it with so this is the Fortret E514. We have the E512. So this is the probably the next model up. It's 115 horsepower and it can do pretty much the same sort of job as our current Fortret. I think it's got about the same capacity, but that can be upgraded. Aha, yes, yeah, so four and a half thousand is the capacity we've got. Got some options for the cabin to make that slightly more modern or keep it older i do like the older look and yeah we can change the color scheme a little bit so that is one option and that option comes with the same header size 5.7 meters so that wouldn't be an upgrade or the next option up from that is the fortress e516 now this is a bit beefier 228 horsepower got the so oh, I know it's got an increased capacity of five and a half thousand liters and we've got a few options for configuring this one we can go to green or we can keep it as standard it's a bit more expensive at eighty nine thousand two hundred dollars but it is going to come with the benefit of a 6.7 meter header which is larger so those are the options we can keep hold of the 12 or we can upgrade and trade in to the 14 or the 16. i'd really welcome your thoughts on what we should do i quite like this harvester it's got a bit of old character to it so it's a good fit from my perspective but please let me know right we're going to hop in the old girl and see if we've managed to increase the working speed it was running at a very slow four mile an hour with the header so hopefully we've uh, done a little bit of fixing and we are still getting some blue smoke out of there so maybe we're just uh, burning off some of the leftover oil that we managed to clean out 
All right, so we'll fetch the header out of here. And we should probably give the header a bit of a wash whilst we are testing this. Right, header attached. So let's just make some space. And we can unfold the harvester as if we were going to be harvesting a field. And switch on. Hopefully we're going to see faster than four mile an hour. Oh, there we go. We're up to seven mile an hour. That is pretty good going. So we have actually increased the speed. That is good. I'm very happy with that. So, yep, yeah, that's... Uh, our tinkering has worked out well, so that's pretty good. So that will make the next harvest a little bit faster, which is good news. Right, let's just give the header a bit of a wash and then we can get it back and parked up. So yeah, that really does sort of help my decision to want to keep hold of this rather old and charismatic fortress. But I'm also just as happy to trade it in for a newer model. So just let me know what you think. Header dropped back off. And the slightly cleaner but now faster harvester parked up for the winter. Pretty pleased with that. Right, let's get back and inspect our bakery. I'm hoping we've got some cookie dough and some bread dough ready. Aha! So we've got some bread dough. We've got 100 litres. And then we've got 157 litres of cookie dough. So that is pretty good. Right, we need to go and fetch some wood so we can get the oven nicely fired up. So we'll go over to our wood storage yard and this time we can extract a pallet of logs. Here we go, nice pallet of logs. So I'm going to ferry them one by one over. Bit of a manual job but we've got that here now and we've run out of space so we need to just shove the wood out of the way. There we go, we can put the wood there. Right, so I think we can start with bread and we'll go put that in the oven and I think hopefully it's going to accept it. There it goes. And then with the cookie dough we'll get this tray and go plop it in here. There it goes. So we now have 500 litres of wood and we've got some bread dough and some cookie dough so we can activate baking bread and baking cookies. So one thing I should have done is open the cover and we can see our bread is baking and also our cookies are baking. So we better cover them up so they cook really nicely. Whilst that's busy baking away I am going to and check in on the animals. They'll probably need a bit of a top up, especially the cows. They always need a bit of a top up of TMR. So the sheep are looking pretty happy and they're 80% of the way to reproduction. So we should see another four sheep join us fairly soon. Aha, and our three pigs have already reproduced into three more pigs. So we have some at the age of zero months. So freshly born piglets. And the others have reached 10 months now, so they are cranking up in terms of price. And yes, the more they reproduce, I think they will go up in price. And yeah, we will look to sell some once uh, we reach the capacity of the pig pen. Cows are 30% of the way to reproduction, but they are making a good amount of milk. And we've got them topped up as much as we can with TMR. Chickens are breeding really nicely, so we have a big range of mature chickens all the way through to chicks. And the horses are doing well too. They are working their way through puberty, at which point they'll be able to reproduce. But Tim is giving them their daily ride training. And yeah, that's keeping them nice and healthy. And I think he's also giving them a bit of a brush as well to keep them nice and clean. So the animal farm is doing really well. But one thing is that it's only a small operation, so we are not getting any slurry or manure from the pigs or the cows. So that's not really contributing to any of our natural fertilizer. But 
If we were to maybe expand the animal farm into a bigger operation later on, then we could look to get some natural fertilizer out of our animals. Right, I can't really wait anymore, so I'm going to see if we've got some cookies and some bread baked already. And would you look at that? We have some bread, and that is 32 litres. And we have a jar of cookies, which is 33 litres. So I have spawned these before they've made a full batch, but that's alright with me. So yeah, we can get the cookie basket out, lay that on the table. Same with the bread basket. And we can get all these goods loaded in. And that is pretty good going. So bread in there. And cookies in there. Fantastic. So we're going to keep on processing away. Baking our goods. And hopefully we'll get a nice full box of bread at some point. That's going to keep us nice and happy over winter. And I think the cookies will be nice with a cup of tea. So we're going to leave things whirring away in the bakery. We can shut this door and shut this one. And head on back to the homestead because that is it for today. Been a relatively busy one. Trying to make use of the time in January whilst we're not doing any sort of field and crop work. Now I can see the snow is on the forecast for this afternoon. So we're going to get nice and comfortable inside. Barkamus will probably join us. And hell, maybe we'll even have one of our cookies. So I hope you have enjoyed watching. If you have, remember to drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already. If you've got any tips, tricks or things you'd like me to do, then feel free to leave a comment. But all there's left to say is I hope to see you again next time on the Frontier Farmer. And until then, I'll catch you later. Cheers all. Bye bye.